<laughs> Should be up again? Yep. Like, I'm certainly good to play. Like, the rest of the stuff, I'll just catch up. Yep. Um... Also, yay SSDs for that fast reboot cycle. <laughs> Way of the future. If I only had an NVE, that would be really nice. <laughs> so as you're all sitting there, um, <laughs> declining the offer, uh, Lord Paisu, of course, is left almost a little spellbound. Just kind of sits back. I have never seen such a sight before. I am quite surprised, but... I shall not admonish the will of my guests. It kind of makes a, a brief gesture towards all the women. I shall see you all in my quarters then. All of the women sort of kind of give uh, sorrowful looks <laughs> towards you all. Lots of ahs and oohs before they lightly step out the door and send their way up the stairs. So much exotic dick on offer, none of them want to give it. <laughs> <laughs> Chances are they ain't never seen a gifts arrive before. <laughs> You know what they say about Gisarai and their large ears. <laughs> the great listeners. <laughs> um, but at that, she simply uh, makes a quick summon to one of the servants. Um, and before very long, a few of them step in with uh, instruments in hand and just begin to play music. It's quite impressive, really. Um, it has sort of that uh, that high strung sound, um, but in its own way, is also kind of very soothing. Sit up. I didn't have to pick this out. This just happened to be on the, on the track list already. <laughs> what do you mean? This is you, Mark, playing right now. <laughs> just my generic background music. I have like 15 tracks this happened to be on. <laughs> but eventually the evening draws to a close. Uh, you are yourselves starting to feel the wear of, again, just the day's travels upon you. Um, to which Lord Maestu will offer the comforts of the lounge or uh, one of the two guest rooms in the layer above. Dibs on the guest room. <laughs> Um, you can need to easily move yourselves to wherever um, Lord Paisu uh, at one point bids his rest as he uh, goes to comfort the five women in his bedroom <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're hugging it out it's <laughs> <Aww. Yeah. laughs> really sad all of a sudden <laughs> So, uh, in the in the guest room uh, that Goose will inevitably find himself in, uh, is there like a window overlooking the outside? Uh, no. Um, the the room is windowless. Um, it sort of has like a um like a musty, dry feel to it. Uh, but the bed is lavish, sort of like sinks underneath you as you sort of test it. Um, the rest of the furniture matches what you found in the lounge, just cushioned, opulent, uh, little traces of gold and crimson. 
So the door is essentially the only way in? Yes. Okay. Also, hey, Ezra. Hello. Oh, I, was, I was wondering... Ezra. If it, yeah, my... If Tengu enjoys a feathered down pillow, is that like using <laughs> human hair for stuffing? It's best to think it's about. Like, that's that's like that's like a distant cousin's like leaving sheddings. <laughs> like birds eat other birds. Don't think about it. <laughs> I mean, they'll just as readily use feathers in nests. Hmm? Yeah, their own feathers even. Just Mark trying to make it weird. <laughs> they take that my, my brain works in strange and interesting ways. That's why I play druids. Yeah. <laughs> As, Ezra, unfortunately you had too much dimension sickness and you were uh, unfortunately robbed of the choice of spending the night with at least five beautiful women. <laughs> Damn it! Note, it note the, to be note, you, kid! Note the phrasing did not mention one of five. It just said with five. <laughs> with five? Well, everyone else that denied them, so, you know, one of five. Okay, That's so... At the same time, a monitor respects them, and he wants them to do their own thing. <laughs> no, they wouldn't like grief. grief. Grief doesn't have any money. Oh, they—they they weren't. They were gifts. They were gifts. They were gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. To, to, to quickly fill you in, you are in the residence of a lord who is so impressed with Amanita's shape shifting into a large avian that he invited you all into his home as honorary guests. So it's uh, our monitor's fault that we're here. Just, just putting it out there. Okay. Yeah. There's also a, a greedy demigod dwelling in the city. <laughs> uh, getting back to what I was saying, is there like any windows at all in the upper floors of this building? Um, not in the guest rooms. Hmm. Um, there is... So, so the upper floor... Um, sort of has a balcony that goes all the way around the four sides. Um, so coming up the stair uh, and sort of turning around looking the opposite side, there are three windows looking out. Um, but the bedrooms do not have windows. Okay. So what Goose wants to do is stay up a little while, um, just keeping watch like outside through a window. And okay. See if he sees any big scary things in the streets or anything <laughs> fun in the streets or anything okay. shiny alright um how about the rest of you so what's uh, Goose doing he's just standing watch I think a merchant would probably do the same and keep him company to make sure he doesn't do anything too stupid as well <laughs> uh, Mana doesn't have anything special going on. All right, I just got here, so I guess I'm not doing anything. I mean, <laughs> well, you you have the evening. You're in a luxurious man's home. Yeah, you're with us. You just didn't partake in yeah. the pleasures of the flesh. <laughs> Uh, you see, you kind of a, a really good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you woke up for the latter half of a musical performance that was pretty decent. Thanks, considering. Um, yeah, for those of you who are standing up and keeping watch, uh, go ahead and roll perceptions. Where are you now? Wait, we're in this man's manor. Why do we need to roll perception? <laughs> oh, fine, I'll roll perception. I need, I don't even have the thing opened up. I am slacking. <laughs> well, it's, it's for people who are keeping watch outside the windows. For any goings on. Okay. Um. Uh, 
I'm back. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, you need to... Oh, no, you did it. <laughs> clack, 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 clack. Okay. Disgusting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, as you kind of stand and watch through the windows and kind of look out, um, the angle of the sun on the horizon casts a dark shadow upon the city of Fenro. The tall, almost labyrinthine spacing between buildings becomes dark tunnels of oblivion. And you don't think you see anything. Um, I don't like the a, language of don't think. <laughs> just a dark, quiet night. It's almost like an eerie quiet, as there's no sound of birds. There's just the rustling of the breeze through the city. And this would be kind of disappointed, and then eventually turn in. <laughs> Alright. Sort of mumbles as he goes past merchant. No, monster. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> a servant out of corners. Can I, can I get anything for you? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to turn in. Good night. They nod and they just keep standing at their post. <laughs> <laughs> Do we all get our own rooms or are we sharing a room? Uh, so you have two guest rooms. Each of them has like a queen sized bed, so two of you could fit if you wanted to sleep together. <laughs> um, that or there's enough space on the floor. You can also, he's also given you use of the lounge if you want to make use of the cushions and the sofas. Goose goes horizontal across a queen size bed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is certainly quite comforting, especially with how you've spent the last few days essentially sleeping in cacted sand or atop your bed rolls. All right. Uh, so you all go to bed. Wake up the next morning, feeling a little refreshed. Uh, you're served a very nice breakfast. Fruits, you get yogurts, um, <clears throat> some small serving of meat, the local bacon. Um, How thick is the bacon? Uh, pretty thick. It's also very salty. It's bacon. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like it's thicker than the bacon you'd certainly find at like a supermarket. Oh, <laughs> we have supermarkets in this world. Medieval supermarket. No, but for a contextual reference. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that's the the truth bomb of oh yeah, we have supermarkets in this world. I forgot to mention them. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you're all sort of uh, find yourself sitting around a big table. Um, Lord Paisu himself looking as though he were 15 years younger. <laughs> Looks very refreshed. Yeah, most people would feel feeling exhausted. Unless he's a vampire. But um, uh, as you're all eating, um, a servant comes from outside the room, and kind of moves over to Paisu and mutters something into his ear, which causes his expression to turn into a frown. He takes a sigh. It's happened again. Something we should be aware of. What's the matter? He kind of tosses a hand. 
Another body has been found. Someone was about last night. No doubt, no doubt Emet wasn't satisfied with what offerings were brought to him. Emet? What was the manner of his expiration? Uh, for reference, to fill you in, Emet is a demigod who is claiming to be a full god, who is basically, um, I don't want to say taken over the city, but he's definitely, like, owns it, so to speak. He only I showed see. up 300 years ago. That just reminds me, would Lucian have any idea of his kind of history of the place, if he knows anything to do with Emet? Uh, you can roll a history. Uh, where am I now? Uh, you would probably be less familiar with Fenro the city or Emet the demigod, and more familiar with Fenro the founder. <laughs> um, he, of course, being a great king of kings who um, banded all of the tribes of the plane together uh, to fight off the Jin many thousands of years ago. Suffice to say, this city seems to be named after him. And just, like, how familiar would I be with the founder? Uh... With your 10, it's more just passing knowledge. Fair enough. Um, but as uh, Lord Paisu goes on to explain, as I have stated the night prior, this Emet's appetite and greed rose with each circle of the sun. If the offerings presented before his altar at the entrance are not to his liking, he claims what he believes is his exacted price. Sounds like a bit of a nuisance, to be honest. Yes, but what can we do? He is a being of considerable power. He has not only felled away rocks, but his very presence maintains law and order. Thieves and criminals are brought before him. His presence in the city has mitigated much of the crime we've suffered in the, th in the years prior to his arrival. I mean, you could just set up a actual god after these sons. I mean, you could set up your own sort of governing force. I mean, you don't have to kowtow to some tyrant. Just because he only, he only has any sort of real legitimate power or influence because everyone's deathly afraid of him. That's Listen. it. Well, we do have a policing force. We have the Shamalir. But with his presence in the city and how much power he holds over us. His temple has gained more control over our legislature than we would like to, or I would personally like to see. <laughs> Sounds Just... like a piece of power, to be honest. <laughs> yes, but as a result, we continue to thrive. But one day, I fear his... His unsatiable greed will eclipse the welfare of the city. You, you said there's a body. Um, where is that body now? The remains are likely being escorted towards the kennels. Mm, kind of thinking about this. <laughs> 
we we do not waste around here. Even I, uh, even human remains are given, at least to the dogs, for them to feast. What is the probability that I could catch up to them before they get to the kennels? Uh, I would say very slim. If this news just reached me, then they've already begun preparations. Mm, unfortunate. Did you have something in mind, Bird? Well, when you look at a body, you can, you know, find out some answers to important questions. How they died? Things that we might need to prepare for? As, as you kind of mentioned that, Lord, um, Lord Paisu seems to turn a bit pale. You speak of dark arts. I will not hear any more of it. <laughs> I said nothing of dark arts. He was speaking about investigating a body to figure out how it was killed. <laughs> That's science! Hand, just raising a hand up uh, towards Goose. I do not believe we are here to interfere local goings of this city. It is their community. I mean... Quest assistance, certainly. But it is not our place to step in. We're not a charity. I'm just putting it out there, fellas. Don't forget who we are. Right? We have an identity. Got a, got a <laughs> face to keep up. A better identity. Then what's that? Uh, switching over to telepathic <laughs> <laughs> to speak to Adam. Um, so what if we dispose of the so-called demigod, which sounds just like an overgrown monster to me, but if we dispose of that, then we could establish ourselves as a dominant force here. I mean... We get a nice big statue of a bird person instead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be feasible, Geese, considering we'd be paying taxes and stuff to the Sultana. And I don't know how the rest of the people in the city would react when we kill their god. I mean, this means just a, you know, outlier. There are several issues with this plan. I mean, you wouldn't hear that because he was speaking telepathically. Quite out. <laughs> the populace is held at bay due to the singular demigod's power if he is replaced we are mortal they would not fear us there is also the consideration that we do not reside here and who amongst us would rule he almost raises a hand and then puts it down <laughs> Who'd be good at ruling is what I want to know. I mean, we're not, we haven't exactly none of us run a city before, have we? Well, we've got a few days here, I guess. What is it, like six days? Yes. Are we going to rule a city for six days, though? Just six? And then leave we, them to their own devices? Are we just going to sit around and watch half-naked ladies dance for six days? That seems like an idea. But I like to be doing stuff. I mean, Goose, what, what, what do you want? You want to just... Uh, they haven't paid us or nothing. I'm Doesn't mean like... There is more in the city of interest than causing political upheaval of the okay. entire society. And it's settled. Let's go and explore. <laughs> As we all are sitting there, like, blank-faced, just looking at each other for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Expressions on our faces changing, accommodating accordingly, but nothing say no one's saying anything. Uh, uh, for, for a brief moment, Lord Casey looks concerned. <laughs> Goose will break that, like, telepathic silence and just say, this is delicious, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, uh, yes, it is quite good. Master Eagle likes to observe a minute silence before breakfast. Uh, oh, of course. Sorry, I've been completely ignorant. I shall endeavor to remember in the future. It is our private custom. We do not require to follow. Right. Yes, well, group meditation is practiced quite often in this city. That's right. That's quite a good thing you've got going. You should uh, encourage that with some policies. Well, by any means, if there is something that ails you, you are free to use my residence at your disposal during your stay. The servants will attend to your needs as they come. We are and if most should, appreciative. You, should you need my presence, you need only but hail a servant, and I shall be with you as soon as I can spare a moment. How pleasant. Um, but he, he slowly rises. Now, if you excuse me, I must join some of the other gentry. We are, to put it as the Kyrians say, to mingle. Does he leave? Yeah, he begins to sort of head out. All right. I turn to the others. Bye-bye. Now, <laughs> I'm all for it. Yeah. Helping these people for some kind of eventual supposed reward. But I just want to put it firmly 100% out there. We are not going to become gods or anything of the like or rulers. We can set up that guy to be like the head of the council who runs this place after or something. That's about as far as I'm willing to go if we do interfere in this place. I do have a possible suggestion. What's he supposed to do? Uh, we follow him and find out what he gets up to. Because he's giving us free lodgings here. Um, for no particular reason besides taking a few feathers. Mitchell, it's you're kind up. of strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that really what you want to do, boss? No, I mean, just follow them a bit, sneak a bit, I mean, like you do. I've been dimensionally sick the entire time. So, you know what? Y y y you guys just t t take the reins. You make all the decisions. I'm, I'm just going to follow along until I get a better grasp of what's going on. Grief. Grief, you good at sneaking? <laughs> yeah, uh... Are you good at it? Some... Uh... Sometimes. Like, how, how sometimes is that? Because Merchant's really good at it, so... <laughs> well, if I may, before we engage in political espionage, I would ask something that I would know. Right. What's up, Emanita? How does this further our original purpose? I mean, it doesn't really. We are here to find others of my kind. So that we might save the planes. Do not think that this furthers that goal. Right? Couldn't we just Wait. ask them to keep an eye out for others of your kind after we put them in power or something? I do not expect they will be so easily found as to be walking down the streets. So, where, where do you think they'd be? Concentrating on the amulet for a moment. Has this thing been pinging me at all? Uh, <laughs> just, just try out everyone and see if anyone replies. <laughs> um, no, but it it does seem like it's grown a bit brighter since you've left Kair. So essentially, it's like a um, it's uh, a crystalline object that's um. <laughs> sort of caught within the amulet with grown vines that sort of form a, a natural cage around it. 
Um, but a light has always been sort of shining out, even if just dimly. Um, but as you sort of look at it here, it seems to be shining just a bit brighter. A sign that a matching piece is probably a shorter distance away now. Okay. Um, all right. So with no frame of reference, all I know is we are somehow closer. But no idea of how much closer. They may be in the city, but I do not think that they are. Leave them most likely to be in the ruins that our patron is seeking. But we're still here in the city for six days. Yes. Right, I mean, so... I mean, we could probably topple this regime in six days. We nearly blew up an academy, yeah, artifact place in like one hour. And that would depend on whether we actually want to help them afterward or just leave them to pick up the pieces in the rubble themselves. I mean, not really. We'll just topple the garden and get out. What's we'll put our friend here in charge with the council because I I don't want to help anyone, but it's uh, suspicious to me that he's putting us up in this uh, rather nice house of his. Nothing good. Nothing good comes free. Why so, not? That's how it is. What if it's not? When was the last time someone gave you gold for free? There's been a couple times. Life. Without you just taking it. You remember that the last time that we, we took something from somebody? You tried to tell some guards on us. And I swore to chop his fingers off, and I didn't get to. I'm just suggesting we find out what this guy is about before we stay in his house for six days. I mean, Mitchell was going to follow him, right? But that was the plan. Yes, right, why don't I follow him and you guys do your own thing? And I'll come back with any information. That sounds but... like an idea. Alright. I'm gonna enjoy this spread. <laughs> Alright. So, Merchant, you are separating off to go spy on Lord Paisu? Apparently, yes. <laughs> Demanded by the boss. That's right. <laughs> Get the fuck out there. Ring your keep. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you guys. Uh, you recognize you the moment where Merchant is there, and then after like a couple of seconds, you realize he's missing. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot see Merchant. Don't think he was good at it. <laughs> Must have ran away. Yeah. Uh, so while Merchant is doing that, where are the rest of you up to? Um, Frowning disapprovingly. <laughs> right now, Grief is currently contemplating being an X-Man of the cloth, but also women. <laughs> uh... Uh... Grief, we, nah, should do, that's... we should do something exciting, like go and explore the rest of the city. Um, I think I'll join Goose on that endeavor, yes. Alright. So, Arnett, you're remaining in the house, just enjoying as much food and entertainment as you can absorb while... Uh, Merchant goes off pursuing Lord Paisu, and the rest of you go to explore the city. I think that's the gist of it. We go and have a debauch party. <laughs> while Merchant works. That's why you <laughs> never put the party. 
<laughs> Who else is gonna get got sneak uh, with me? Okay. Um. So in that case, we'll start with merchant. Yellow. So, um, still using your <laughs> uh, stealth roll, you managed to move down the stairs of this uh, abode and uh, catch up to Lord Paisu, sort of. Uh, moving in such a way that you're um, sort of following a fair distance behind as he makes his way down one of these uh, streets. Again, the buildings of stone reaching up tall and high to where um, you know it just feels like you're in like a stony a stony maze. I was just gonna say, much um, would like to remember that that he, obviously kind of like when they were going to the place, the feeling of being watched. So he will try to keep like an extra eye out of anyone else who seems to be skulking, presumably for this person. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll perception. Eight. <laughs> uh, you don't see anyone. Uh, that makes it a bit. That makes it more worrying for him. <laughs> Um, yeah, not, not one time since he has said that he has armed guards, have you ever actually seen them in person? Um, so you, you can't help but feel an odd feeling as you tail after him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like the idea of like, they're both stealth each other really well, but they still haven't noticed each other either. <laughs> I know he's that, dead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like that. No, he's there. We can't see him. Fuck. Assassin's Creed merchant. <laughs> um, yeah. At one point, he enters into uh, what seems like a prominent building. Um, it's got a few banners around it. Um, one of the banners resembles the banner um, above the Paisu homestead. You know the the building wide mural of the radiant avian creature. You said it was only one of a few, though. One of a few. There are there are several other banners. Um, I presume each, they're all respectively different. Yeah, each of them are decorative. Um, Paisu's is a, a predominant crimson. Um, the one beside it is sort of in a crimson gold. Um, it has on it its display a uh, uh, a scorpion with a skull on its back. Um, another is the fiction of a moon and a uh, beautiful woman sort of sitting underneath. Um, given that he said he was going to mingle with other members of the gentry, uh, it's not too far of a stone's toss to guess that, you know, these are probably other members of the noble class here in the city. I'm able to like sort of gather what the kind of building is. I do like a kind of courthouse kind of thing. Um, it's hard to tell from the outside. It seems mo it seems pretty square. Uh, like it has enough spacing around it to suggest that it has some prominence here in the city. Um, stationed out along it, or at least at like a uh, one set of doors or a set of um, particularly dressed individuals, each of them uh, holding at their side a pole arm. Um, as you might take the time to scale around, as I assume Merchant would, um, there's also a pair on the other side. So there are two main entrances on uh, cartographical sides with two guards, each carrying pole arms, standing attentively. All right, fair enough. Uh, there isn't any sort of formal windows. It's just the entrances. Uh, there are some windows above, um, three on each side, um, but they're no wider than to allow, you know, an arrow shaft to fit through. 
So what kind of window are they? Just super just, thin. Yeah, like super thin. Um, like you, you would easily surmise that you would have a tough time squeezing yourself into one. I was, I was more for just looking through. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I, I do have the uh, the arachnid cape, so climbing should not be an issue. True. Um, the only issue there is, again, that because this building is a little spaced out from all the others... It'd uh, be very obvious. Yeah, even with your stealth. Yeah, then I, I guess I'll just sort of keep an eye out for when my man adventures out again. All right. In that case, we'll go to the rest of the party. Uh, so you guys are exploring the city. Um, yep. <laughs> Amanda's goal is to listen to conversations in various merchants to see if there are any rumors stories to ask about legends about um strange like the historical ruins and old settlements and what was the city built upon and all that fun stuff okay looking for hints and rumors of past civilizations or where there might be a hint of his people i see grief would be interested in, in the history of the surrounding area as well um, go ahead and roll persuasion then, with disadvantage. Both of us? Yeah. Hmm, can we work together and make it normal, like not disadvantage, or? Uh, no, because again, it's like, the city is weary of foreigners, mm. and so they might not be as, um, willing to make conversation with you. Alright, I'm going to roll Persuasion then. And I imagine we both are approaching it from a slightly different perspective in that Amanada is not looking for facts and intellectual pursuits. He's just making chit-chat with legends and folktale. Yeah, and while Grief is more like the book smartsy kind of guy, Amanada is well... He's just the wise guy. He's the wise guy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Grief, you managed to find someone. Uh, uh, the person you find actually stands out a bit. Um, when you come upon them, they are garbed in... Uh, dark robes and cloth, so much so that you can only see um, a tiny portion of their eyes. Um, but what you can make of their hands is that uh, the skin is almost charcoal black, um, with sort of like a dusky gray coloration, uh, along with uh, uncut nails to an extent. Um, they appear to take fascination with you. Um, and given the cleanliness of their robes, they don't seem to be uh, too akin to the common uh, the common worker or laborer that you've encountered or seen in this city so far. So they seem like an oddball, period. Hmm. Um, they, they, they certainly stand apart, especially wearing dark robes in a desert. Um just like me <laughs> but they, so, they 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 uh sort of eye you over curious it has been a long time since i have seen one of your kind around these parts <laughs> they did not last for very long you'll find i'm not like my own kind well at least not as far as dying easily goes <laughs> that remains to be seen but you come to me with a query on your face. <clears throat> Grief kind of stretches a little and places his 
hands behind his back and steps a little closer. All I'm really here for is to learn more about this place. It's history. Is there anything, well, otherworldly about it? Dark? I don't know. Something evil that shouldn't be here, you know? <laughs> you must be new. I could say that, but I can kind of smell it. Hmm. And I can clearly smell the blood off you. Whoever smelt it, Derek. The city has seen its fair share of what you might call evil. No doubt, I'm sure you've heard or seen the statues of the crocodilian deity the city worships. Crocodilian deity? <laughs> I've not seen it. I've been a little uh, sick, actually. Ah. Traveler. Dimension what? sickness hits us all. <laughs> you have my sympathies. Me as far as... Well, me, me far more than anyone else. I need to find a real remedy for it, really. But that's not really why I'm here. Would this deity you mentioned uh, happen to have anything to do with the uh, Timmy guy who seems to run amok in this place. They are one and the same. Uh, I must have something in my ears. I've clearly not been listening well enough. Hmm. You would endeavor to keep your ears sharp. You've had three people following you. They were over there in the shadows. Of course, Please. as you turn to look, um, you can see in just uh, one alleyway directly across uh, three individuals who, uh, at first glance, seem like they're just casually loitering in the shade. Um, you can just sort of feel and even subtly detect their wayward glances in your direction before they sort of uh, make a fake chatter amongst themselves. Grief isn't going to call them out. He is armed. So if anything were to happen... You would do your best to mind your horns. Tiefling horns in these parts are considered a mystic herbal remedy. Oh, isn't that lovely? At least it's not an aphrodisiac. Tiefling horns no. make you horny. No, the aphrodisiac comes from another part of the tiefling. Please don't say it. <laughs> the tiefling lower horn. <clears throat> I believe they mean the toenails. Yes. Your friend here knows well the mythic and urban legends surrounding teeth lengths. I am surprised. I have also heard that a similar efficacy can be obtained by shaving the tips of the horns and mixing with the end of the tail, yet yielding a greater volume of supply. Uh, uh, uh. Grief is going to try to remain as stoic as he possibly can, but a monitor. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you are not coming near my feet. I would never <laughs> harvest from a living creature. Did you hear that? It's going to kill you in sleep and touch your feet. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you guys are cracking me up. <laughs> Can't take this seriously. Well. <clears throat> Well, those folks that followed us, now Grief is going to talk far, far more quieter. Do you think they're just people following me because they want my horns, or do they maybe work for the big man who runs the place? If you're referring to the temple, he boasts no such espionage. He does not need it. Makes sense. He's got an iron fist, not a velvet glove. Yes. But he does have a uniquely profound sense of smell. I'm sure he's already keen of new scents in the city. And I reek of blood. Lovely. <laughs> you reek of blood, so you're probably the safest among your friends here. There was always a scent of blood in the air. Hmm. Ironic. Well, I suppose that's all the questions I have for now. He tips his head off to a, a monitor, so monitor could ask if he has any questions. You seem well studied in herb lore. You'd be interested in trade. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is not herbs I possess. I only possess a unique set of skills. Currently, I am not seeking employment. I am looking for something. Perhaps we could trade information. You seem well traveled yourselves. Indeed. There are many things that I know. Experience. I would share that with you. I am searching for a people. They have been rumored to be near these parts. I am told that they are not far from a town about six days from here. Have you heard of such people? No, that we are travelers here. Many of the peoples are unfamiliar to us. What sets this people apart from, with like a, an expansive gesture to the rest of the city, to these people? I have been given the unique piece of information that they are not of this plane, much like yourselves, but that they arrived and have remained hidden for many, many dozens of years. They seek something that I am after. Such a people would know many things, lost things. They could be of interest to me as well. Perhaps we can work together, as they say, to pool resources. Perhaps. We do not know where this people might be, but my companions and I are quite accomplished adventurers. Our services may be of use to you. Um, from between those, uh, two dark bands of cloth his eyes seem to squint um his eyes as you kind of look at them are completely black you cannot tell them you can't tell any pupil from them whatsoever um almost like looking into the eyes of a, sh a shark 
once it has smelled blood in the water. It muses for a moment, and then shakes its head. No, I'm afraid not. I am simply looking for information. And it seems that we are both in the same footing. I do my best work alone. But I shall keep aware of your presence here in the city. That he makes motion to leave. Could we discover new information? How might we find you? He kind of turns, and even though there's cloth wrapped over his mouth, you can't help but see a little quirk of a grin. Just follow the scent of blood. As he turns back and continues on. Uh Peering at his figure as he walks away, looking carefully towards the, the folds and the way the cloth moves, is there any distinguishing physicality to his figure? Uh, there is. Um, you could roll history to identify what he is. Um, the 16... Um, given his mannerisms, um, the particular fact that he is bound in dark cloth, and that what portions of skin you can see are almost dusky charcoal black, you reckon that, um, <laughs> uh, this individual is a creature known as a dark stalker. Dark stalker. Other than just being totally metal and awesome. What is a dark stalker in 5th edition? <laughs> <laughs> um, essentially, uh, they are the elite leaders of a subgroup known as Dark Creepers. Um, even more enigmatic and unknown than their squatter brethren who seem to find a domicile and just sort of keep around. Um, the origins and goals of the Dark Stalkers are entirely mysterious. Um, they're almost similar to the Drow um, in how they employ themselves, though. Namely with swords, poison, uh, and a natural Dark Cloud ability that sort of forms into a obscuring fog around them. Any motivations historically consistent? Um, or associations? They are, they are certainly associated with CD underbellies. He mentioned that... Um, he had a particular set of skills this would seem to align with more underworld endeavors um but it is curious that he is here by himself and not with like an entourage hmm okay so, uh, to the group uh, in character uh Amana just explains all that and uh, expresses uh, curiosity at the lone entity that we just interacted with since they seem to work in small groups more frequently. I presume this information will be advised to me later. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so on that you... note... Um, actually, go ahead, Goose, if you had something. I, I was going to just ask what um, Amanita proposes we do about it. For the moment, too little is known to take informed action. I suggest we simply be more aware of our surroundings and those who may be of, have similar goals to our own though with different motivations. We are not the only ones 
seeking these artifacts. We have to proceed with due caution. We uh, can't really afford to slip up now, can we? We got people with eyes on us. That's it's really not good. You know, I'm so used to that now that I'd actually feel stranger if people weren't watching us. Mm. <laughs> Well, it certainly makes it known to us that splitting up isn't really a, really a good idea. Indeed not. I suspect the Lich's minions are many and myriad. Grief kind of like his eyebrow twitches a little when you mention a Lich. <laughs> Grief looks physically sick at the mention of a Lich. We're bitching about the lich. <laughs> I'm a bitch about the lich as much as I want. As you guys are talking amongst yourselves, uh, Ardent. Um, mm -hmm. what's, Ardent <laughs> what's Ardent doing after he's finished a nice breakfast? Ardent is just. I mean, there's not much for him to do right now besides second breakfast. Lay back and chill. Okay. Um, going out in the desert town doesn't really interest him much. In a place <laughs> like this, there's always an opportunity for a good brawl every corner you turn. Also, I thought yeah, Arden was with us. No, no, Arden stayed stayed home and had bread, lots of bread, ah. good calories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Arden doesn't. He doesn't just search out fights. He only fights with people who he thinks might be a good, fun time. What, what about the guy that you punched out because you had to discover the secret about the ice cream? What about the bar fight that he got into? <laughs> Both those times were for good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he's, is he just like relaxed on a, in the lounge or just reclining in a chair yeah he's got um he's just eating some grapes all right make a perception check boom okay <laughs> you are happily eating some grapes <laughs> just enjoying a day off um Delicious grapes. Yeah, you're you're in the lounge area where you were the night before. It still vaguely smells like all the uh, food, perfumes, and um, whatever else lingers from the occasion. Um, and then you are suddenly aware that there is a figure standing in the door of the room. Uh, and the very image of them shocks you because they look like this. Ew. Moisturize me! Uh, this is a dust man. You've encountered them before. Is that the one that tried to kill me? Dust. No. But you, the, they have certainly interacted with Black Book. Namely, when they've grabbed onto fellow members and disintegrated them with just a touch. And he is emotionlessly looking at you as you have a little uh, grouping of grapes sort of suspended over your mouth. I eat the rest of the grapes. He makes a <laughs> charge. I'd like you to roll initiative. <laughs> Why you got? <sighs> I always do. I always say, interrupting me when I'm trying to enjoy my time. It's like, uh, can I just be left alone? Uh, I'm just gonna add you to the turn order. I love how this always happens when the party healer is nowhere near. 
<laughs> Y'all gotta buy some more potions, man. <laughs> I think you all still have my last collection of them. I don't think any of you gave them back. <laughs> all right. <laughs> A long borrowing is what we call it. The dust. The dustman goes first as he, um, sort of moving, uh, unnaturally. Like he moves with enough motion and precision that it could in no way be humanoid. Um, he reaches out a hand, um, dusk sort of like filtering off him in a soft cloud as he moves. Um, and he tries to touch you. You didn't drink my water. You look awful. <laughs> I'm a sponge bath. Um, so, 18. Yeah, that hits. All right. I don't have an incredibly high AC. I'm a barbarian. Uh, is the armor you're wearing magical? I'm wearing no armor. No armor? No armor. Okay. Um. So you will take. Thirty-five disintegrating damage. Um, as his hand connects, uh, whatever portion of clothes he's able to reach immediately disintegrate, um, exposing you know perhaps like a, a flank of shoulder. Um, even as the touch lingers still, you sort of feel your shoulder immediately beginning to dry, as though all moisture is being sucked. Um, you begin to feel your skin cling tight to your bones. Um, and it is incredibly painful. That hits. Uh, fortunately, that's just his turn. Alright. I'll rage. I'm gonna slash at him. What's the rest of this establishment doing? Uh, it's oddly quiet. Oh. <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's rather... Hmm. Alright, both of those hit. Um... So he did text for you. Okay. Uh, with each slash, um, a small plume of dust sort of follows the swipes. Um, can I use a free action to throw a cup of water on him? <laughs> uh, you can. I'll do it. <laughs> so you sort of grab it like a like a half filled mug beside you and just splash it on him. Um, uh, as it connects, um, the portion sort of gets on his face and down part of his neck, uh, and some of the dust sort of like coagulates, sort of melting. Um, that's gross. That's awful. Ugh. His expression remains unchanged. Um, what happened with you in the ocean? <laughs> you just turned into a mud man, wouldn't you? Ugly mud. Mud boy. <laughs> he, he continues to move forward, again, stretching another hand as he tries to grab for your throat. Stop touching me. That's awful. Should touch others without their permission. Fourteen. That misses. All right. That misses. So you managed so manage to like sort of backpedal out of the way as he makes the swipe, um, but he is still upon you. Your turn. All right. Let's let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. And then a move. So amidst all the blows, um, one swipe just cleanly severs an arm off and just patters to the floor as a pump of dust. 
Um, for a moment, it just sort of looks down at it, and then it just turns its attention back to you, completely unfazed. You need to get some hobbies, my friend. Honestly, if you're just reacting like that, can I'm chopped off. What is your life? Just a little desk boy. Um, it is going to attempt to use an ability. Uh, I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw mm-hmm. as its body okay. begins to kind of uh, almost <laughs> form into a mist. Don't do uh, that. In an attempt to grab you. Um, as, as you expertly sort of dodge and roll to the side, um, as a bit of you was caught in the mist, you sort of felt for a moment the entire room sort of uh, shimmer. Um, and for a very brief moment, you saw a glimpse of an entirely open desert before you were you sort of find yourself again back in this lounge, getting dust everywhere, knocking things aside. Um, you shouldn't do that. Let's, that was bad. I hate you. Uh, it's back to your turn again. I'll reckless attack these. Okay. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, you, you finish it off. So as your as your sword connects, um, the dust man sort of collapses onto its knees, falls forward, and just collapses into a formless pile of dust. Uh, <sighs> amidst the pile, though, you can make out two objects. One of them is a uh, perfectly cut onyx crystal. Um, and the other uh, is an emblem which you recognize Uh, it is a sigil of the Asira estate Asira estate yes this is the same family who sent an assassin to kill you incidentally enough (laughs) Um, is also the same family whose patriarch you killed and whose house you burned to the ground. Yeah, them! That's right. The, oh, is, are they still mad about that? Honestly. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. He was a bit of an old bastard, and the house needed to be remolded anyways. I did them a favor. Um, but yes, uh, at some point, um, I presume everyone can reconvene. Merchant, your quarry, um, goes uneventful. You're really (laughs) just left, you find yourself in a stakeout with nothing eventful going on until, um, shadow creeps over the city of, uh, For no. I presume once uh, the Lord gets back to his place, Merchant would with the rest of the group. Yeah, because like um, at some point it probably becomes clear to you that he's not leaving anytime soon. Um, <laughs> you're probably the first to arrive and find Ardent there in Lord Paisu's manor. Um, <laughs> as well as the complete mess of dust that is now in the lounge area. Oh, so they attacked him in the home? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I, I presume it was a bar for some reason. Just <laughs> adding things. <laughs> no. uh, you, also, you also, as you as you step in, uh, find other little piles of ash sort of leading to the lounge. Assuming as soon as he walks, well, sees the piles of ashes and gets into hard, it's like, is this your doing? He, he just left. Where do you go? And why? Oh. The questioning was too vigorous. <laughs> <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> God, 
damn it. Ar- Arden's just in a state of reeling. Um, <laughs> just in the in the, in the, in the to his, took a shock to his system. He has to kind of reboot reboot himself. <laughs> um, did that thing leave any gear behind in the pile of ashes? I will check the dust. <laughs> dust for prints and gear. <laughs> He did not leave anything in the dust pile apart from what Ardent has gathered. Um, the other little dust piles on the way to the lounge don't have anything else. Um, except maybe like a like a bone. A random little bone here and there. So the impression I'm getting is that the there are there are no occupants anywhere to be seen? Seems like all the slaves or whatever have been dusted. They'd be they have been Thanos. That's the impression I'm getting. I'm just looking to confirm that. Um, as you all arrive and make investigation, uh, that's that seems precisely the case. Um, as you enter the kitchen, there's a couple of little dust piles. As you go upstairs, where servants were positioned the night before, there are two more. I am reminded of a religious phrase from a different culture. They may put great stock in the concept of from dust to dust. I did not mean think they meant it literally. Ah. They fell victim to this. Their own weakness. So be it. Um, After all standing there um you all suddenly hear a clatter from just a few paces away as lord paisu has entered into the homely stead oh this is in his place yes yeah i thought thought we were at the the caravan no (laughs) okay that's very different (laughs) <laughs> That's mean okay. all the all the slaves or whatever you want to call them have been yeah. dusted. We, we Everyone pick a hiding place. We do not want to be here right now. We, we we can't just explain what happened. I mean, it's not like we don't know what happened. We haven't seen any of this. We just see piles of dust. Well, I didn't know what's happened because he was there, and he's not here. <laughs> well, technically, he is. He's at a momentary loss for words. <laughs> Okay, so he didn't like wander off or something. He is here. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how I'm misconfusing. So misconfusing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Are you okay, Mark? I'm having a day. We're all, We're all having a good day. day. Uh, <laughs> not sure quite the there. Confusion spell backfired at some point. That, that spell's coming off my list. Like, I can't do that to other people. I know how much it sucks. <laughs> I was coming off your list. Confusion. <laughs> um. Man, what yeah. did you do? Amanda is just gonna, you know, assuming that Arden is explaining himself here. Amana kind of scoops up some remains for study. <laughs> <laughs> you know we... he has a ton of vials on him. Add it to his collection. A piece of my collection. I mean, it's, it's bodily remains. For all I know, they're super fertile soil. Um, with a load of what's definitely people being turned into dust, uh, Ghost is very frantic and would probably be hiding behind something. 
Should we just presume that uh, Arden has informed us of the thing that attacked us? Uh, yeah, you can probably presume Arden would comply with such a request. <laughs> um. Grief, um, he kind of looks at the dust pile for them and shakes his head going, Can't stay out of trouble, can you? I've only known you for what, three days? Of course, Arden is still in great shock. <laughs> yeah, with 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 Pari Sue back, we kind of wanna wait for his reaction to the the whole dusting. Pai Su has sort of knelt down, he's kind of scooped his fingers into an ash pile and lets it sort of run through his fingers. Or clenching his hands. What what has happened to you? Do you actually know what the name of those things are? Yes. Uh, they are dustmen. Um you even you've encountered their stall in the market. So are they a faction of sorts or uh yeah, they're a faction of assassins. Um, Happen to be made out of dust and can um, turn you turn you into cat litter on site. Yes, and they are frighteningly quiet and stealthy. Uh, do, do we know what? that they've been sent? Uh, Ardent would have told you because he would have seen it. Um, yeah, but I mean, all, all we know is that the dustman attacked him. How do we know that they were sent by anyone? Uh, in in the pile, there was an onyx crystal, and there was an emblem of House Asira, who you guys right. have had previous dealings with. I was just making sure that we can obviously inform him of uh, attempts against our great Lord Eagle's life. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, gonna need a deception on that one. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> um. Paisu Pharos's brow goes. <sighs> but. For what reason are the dustmen hunting you? For what reason are House Asira seeking your downfall? I know that they have experienced recent ruin, but for them to contract a dustman seems unlike them. Perhaps they blame him for their downfall. Have you had dealings with House Asira? <laughs> Goose immediately says no. No, 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 no. I... Oh. Mike was choppy there. That was very choppy. Uh -huh. hey, uh, Goose would have said no because he has not had any dealings with them. He's heard of them, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and he just kind of stares down at the dust before him. This is a grave day. Many of these servants served my family for many years. Many of them were loyal, kind people. For such a thing to happen. Wait, were some of the were some of your servants killed? <laughs> 
No one's paying attention to that. Jesus. <laughs> I I am really tired. I'm kind of dealing with someone barking in my tree about something stupid. I apologize. I will explain that. <laughs> well, yes, we're... there has been a pile of just piles all the way to Adam. And also <laughs> the other people in the house were Adam and slaves. We're oh, in the for... household of a local lord who has given us uh, the courtesy of sheltering us. And, and he was very impressed with uh, Gusis's feathers for some reason and uh, Amanada's uh, eagle forms. In return, he gave us shelter, food, women, basically <laughs> the courtesy. Now, well, while we were out and about, Arden stayed behind having breakfast, and these assassins killed every servant in the place to get to Arden. Yeah, I recalled that much. I'd... God, what a sloppy assassin. <laughs> you come in, you kill literally everybody but your fucking target. I'm a bit, um, a bit lacking information on what happened with the Azira, but I'm gathering that Blackbird kind of destroyed them. As I explained to Azira in another channel, uh, we uh, killed the Lord, we stole the vault, and we burned the mana down. Yeah, please tell me you're not saying that out loud. No, that's why I said that they were probably coming for our Eagle Lord here. <laughs> That answers my question, because <laughs> I have no we, idea. We, we basically broke up a we an arranged wedding between two oh. very, very powerful houses. And in the process, we stole the deed to one of the estates, burned it down, <laughs> and I think I'm... killed the local lord? I'm not really sure. That was like session four? You <laughs> stole the deed to the estate, and then you burned the estate to the ground? <laughs> It, 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 was, it, it was a it was a botch job. That's job. We did get the guys to help us take the vault, which was very funny, because they walked in on us. We're trying to get out of the wall. We kind of look at them and go, "We need to get this out of here so it doesn't burn down, so we can save stuff." And they're like, "That sounds like a good idea." So then we they carried it out. And we just kept walking. With it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that was like a nat twenty deception check too. It, it was something like that. It was, it was, it was very fucking funny. <laughs> you, uh, give me shit for starting trouble. Because <laughs> uh, uh, one of the other characters got possessed by a ghost of one, like the Lord's son or something like that. No. So she like jumped and attacked him, and then we were just in combat. Then and then it's like, oh shit! And I can't even remember how the fire started actually. Yeah, I think that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I fucking what a mess. <laughs> Long, long story yeah. short, it, it, this was us at our very beginning, and we had not really <laughs> learned how to not fuck up what do you, that much. What do you mean? That set I'm, the president of how we're going to be for the rest of the campaign of just nothing I'm glad, like right. glad you added the that much bit on the end. That clarified <laughs> a lot. Yeah, when did the Dustmen attack us before? Was it in, uh, like, Tavern, or...? Um... The Tavern- the Tavern burned down, and the local- the local company rumored that it was Dustman. Um... However, you recently discovered that it was actually the work of Quillet the Angel. <laughs> Bastard. Um... But Black Book have been dealing with the Dustman before. Um... You know, be being an, a hired group of assassins that also branch across the plains. It's not like you guys wouldn't have had interactions already. Also, hey, welcome, welcome back, mate. <laughs> Zeke, there he is. Welcome back. Yeah, so... Merchant just lied to Paisu and said, oh, they're probably trying to kill uh, our eagle lord. Um, so as far as the local lord is concerned, um, we don't know. We just happen to be here. <laughs> and Amanda will uh, he won't actually try to 
state that or deny anything. Like, he's just, you know, by omission, just not mentioning anything. But he will ask the Lord if he has any enemies, if he knows why assassins would want to kill his household, like, to send a message, maybe? Like, this is all targeted against, uh... The, the Lord. Um, he'll sort of think on it for a moment. Um, enemies, well, I don't know if any who would go through such the risk of hiring a dustman. Their costs are just as noteworthy as their reputation. I mean, I, I have my rivals in the council, but I wouldn't think any of them would go as far as this. I mean, sure, I've occasionally mustered here and there my disapproval for the temple's methods, unless unless is the work of Emet starts to consider. But <laughs> no, I was died. Emet usually does these things himself. I don't know why he would even need to use a dustman on me. Perhaps it was meant as a message. What kind of message could that possibly be? Don't step out of line. Mona just shrugs his shoulders. I could not say. We do not speak, friend. Paisu just looks very confused. Uh, my apologies. I... I did not realize that I was putting you all at such great risk. This has been a most ruinous day. I'm sorry uh, that you had to see the sight of my unfortunate servants. He kind of begins to sort of break down, kind of clasps a hand over his mouth, see tears forming. Without really consulting with the rest of the party on this, uh, Goose just kind of steps forward and uh, says, as long as we remain here, um, if you are happy for us to remain, uh, we will endeavor to protect you from these assassins. Grease kind of moves over and puts a hand on Kaizu's shoulder to try to get uh, Paizu that, to uh, comfort him. Uh, he just completely gives in, latches his arms around you and buries his face into your chest. Starts weeping. Oh god, he's a hugger. <laughs> Goose sort of turns around and goes, <laughs> The grief kind of takes a deep breath and closes his eyes and just lets, lets Paizu let it all out. While, while they're having this discussion, uh, Amana is crouched down, kind of like running his, his some of the ashes through his fingers um, with a contemplative look on his face. Hmm. There is a possibility. Man My does. Lord, is there a particular servant or servants that you would have restored? Though I warn you, at great cost. Paisu seems to stop for a moment he kind of slowly registers your words kind of looks back Sizer, Buffy what is it you're saying? it is within my abilities to restore 
not in the same form, but to restore the spirit and the soul of those who have fallen into a new form, yet retaining who they are and their memories, a chance, perhaps, to live again. Pauses for a moment. Shit, he's gonna really believe you're a god. <laughs> but there is a chance that they would not return as Genasi. They would most likely not return as they were, but born again into new forms. They would retain their memories and who they were. Merely in a different shell, much as a hermit crab might grow into a new shell, the original is destroyed. I am unfamiliar with this crab you speak of, so the metaphor is a bit lost on me, but I understand what you're trying to say. Clearly it is some fault of mine that... My servants were taken from me. I am not a man of great wealth, but I can afford at least to attempt to regain the forgiveness of two of them. If that would be fine. I would require certain oils and unguents. As we discussed with the merchants, I have, I believe, to obtain such cost uh, roughly 1,000 gold pieces for each person to restore. I would have to do this upon the morrow. I cannot do it today. You can provide these materials. I can restore. He stops and just kind of thinks for a moment. Yes. Three servants. Tomorrow. If you wish it. He, uh... Silently nods. Three thousand... Two thousand gold pieces. It's... It's quite a sum. But I shall accept this cost. In the morrow, then, I shall find these oils that you require, and I shall bring them here. Amana will take a strip of uh, parchment, which might look odd to this, uh, to this lord, as it's made from plants and materials that don't exist on this plane. Um, casually pluck a plume from Goosehead standing next to him. Ow. Thank you. And uh, write out uh, the specific rare oils and unguents needed. Alright. Um, as soon as you give him the list, he is turned about and set off into the market, sparing no expense to begin this uh, arduous scavenger hunt. Uh, and we'll probably call it there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Very well. A lot has surprisingly happened. <laughs> and Arden got a fight in, so yay. <laughs> See, no matter where he goes, he's always going to cause a fight. Typical. That's one. right. Fight in round the world. <laughs> I don't know why we're worried about me fighting this big demigod. Let's just let me at him. We had trouble with the, the servants of an angel, and you want to take on a half god. <laughs> I don't I'm think basically... it'll go quite so well. Uh, did he have trouble? Or was it because he cheated by blinding me? 
I think it's because he cheated. Well, I think it's because he blinded us. If he hadn't blinded us, we would have clapped his cheeks very quickly. That's right. Exactly. Uh, remember, the, the only reason we technically won is because Goose managed to actually banish him. Like, who knows who would have died? The only reason we won is because we were actually trying to kill him. 